Bow, bow, bow. What's up, sons? It's Blind Red with Sound Attack once again, and today I have yet another how to video. Today we're going to be talking about how to replace the thermal pads on the EVGA GTX GeForce 1060 3 gigabyte. There we go. I said GeForce and GTX backwards. Anyways, um, we have done this before on this particular GPU. I have a more concise and to the point method to get this done. The reason it needed to be done on this particular card is because, well, it was thermal throttling. We tested Firestrike uh, pre, of course, pads and our scores were down. And then we did the stress test and saw that the thermal limit Th temp limit was uh, throttling the GPU so you can set that all up with MSI Afterburner we can cover that in a different how-to video to help troubleshoot but for this one in particular we needed to get it apart and get some new pads and paste on so without further ado let's get into it but first check out the affiliate links down in the description below Specifically today, what I'm going to be showing off is going to be the YubiKeys in the affiliate link down below. And you can use YubiKeys, which are hardware multi-factor authenticated devices, to protect all of your accounts. This is especially needed in things that have any financial information in them, such as, of course, cryptocurrency exchanges, bank accounts, so on and so forth. It also is a fantastic way to help manage any sort of DNS as Cloudflare offers the YubiKey support, and I love them. So definitely check them out. Order at least two if you're gonna go for it, so you can put one for, of course, a backup in a fireproof safe, etc wherever you please. Anyways, let's get into how to replace the thermal paste on the EVGA GTX 1063 gigabyte. This particular car is not too difficult. It is a little different than some other models though. And we'll kind of go over that and you'll see why here in a second. But first things first, you're gonna to need to get all of the parts and equipment that you need to perform this. That's going to include, well, I use an iFixit toolkit I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link for that down in the description below, so definitely check that out. And then, as well as that, you're going to go ahead and need some scissors to cut the thermal pads. The thermal pads that this particular card uses are one millimeter pads. I'll leave an affiliate link for Amazon directly to those for you guys as well in the description so you can click on over and snag some one millimeter thermal pads. And then you'll need some thermal paste. I'm using the MX4, been using it for forever. It lasts the longest, doesn't break down as quickly as others. So, you know, definitely pick up some Arctic MX4 if you're gonna be doing a lot of thermal pad and thermal paste refurbishments. Next, okay, we are going to talk about what you need to do. This is pretty straightforward. All you really need to do is flip the card over and there's going to be four screws, a total of 10 screws that you're going to remove, but the four screws that you're first gonna remove will be, uh, basically have little springs on them. So I recommend loosening them all a little bit first and then removing them. You don't have to just makes it a little bit better um, because you want to keep even pressure on that GPU core while you're removing it. Once you have the four screws out, you're going to flip the card over and pop the cooler off. And under the cooler, you're going to find a fan header. You'll need to pull the fan plug off. And then once that's off, you can put the cooler to the side. A good note about this card is it does have a thermal core. So the cooling capacity is pretty decent, even though it is a single fan card. You do have to run these things at like 100% though, otherwise they're going to thermal throttle no matter what. I say 100%, 80 to 100% somewhere in there. The stock fan curve that keeps it around 60% just isn't enough. You at least need to allow it to go higher. So I do, I do recommend modifying the fan curve on this particular card just so you can get the full performance out of it. Now, once you've gotten that all worked out, you are gonna notice that there is another thermal plate. Uh, that's the best term that I can come up with. And it's a, basically a thin metal plate that goes over the memory modules to cool them, or at least hopefully help dissipate some of the heat. In my experience, it's not the best way to handle it, but because of the way they designed the cooler itself, you're not going to be getting 
any good passive cooling on there. So you're gonna wanna maintain the thermal plate. So keep that in mind. I highly recommend maintaining that because of the cooler design, like I said. So we are gonna have to remove the thermal plate. So you're gonna flip the GPU back over and there will be six screws to remove. And those six screws will basically come out with like the, the number one head screwdriver once again. So same size as you did for of course the actual cooler itself and you'll remove those six screws flip it back over and pull that plate off that will expose the thermal pads now on initial measurement i had pulled like somewhere 0.5 for the memory modules and then 0.1 uh, for the additional little modules that had covers on them but once I put the plate back on, I realized that it was still what had like too much of a gap. So I just took the plate back off and went with one millimeter across all of them. And then we had a good contact surface between the thermal plate and the thermal pad, which is really what you're looking for. So they're all one millimeter thermal pads and cut to size the ones that go over the little strips because it did have a full long strip over it but I feel like you're blocking off some additional cooling on some of the parts there, unless of course you went with a thicker pad, which I didn't have any in. So I just cut those all the size. And then for the memory modules, just cut it as strips like I normally do, plopped those on, and then you'll put the thermal plate back on, flip it back over, and this can be a little tricky. So when I did it, I held the plate on with my hand while I got it started with two screws and then just placed it back on the table and continued to put in the remaining four screws there. And they're just gonna be the screws that don't have the spring on them. Also a good thing here is that they're all the same size. So you don't have to worry about having longer ones in one section and shorter ones in the other. They're all the same size, so you'll put the thermal plate back on and then flip the GPU back over. At this point, you can clean off the old thermal paste from both the lock as well as the GPU core. Apply the thermal MX4. Use a spreader when doing GPU cores because you aren't going to get a good spread if you just do like a dot or anything. And plus, you're wasting some thermal paste in the process of doing that. So I always use the spreader for GPUs. That's my personal preference. Kind of get a nice thin film on there and then plug the fan header back into the board and place the cooler back on top of the GPU. Flip it back over, make sure the holes are aligned. Start all four screws and then tighten in a star pattern, meaning crisscross. So from one corner to the corner furthest away on the other side and then just tighten them down evenly to get a nice good pressure on of course the gpu core at this point you can throw it back in the system and you'll be good to go now before we had done this we were running 100 percent fan speed and in the fire strike test we are still hitting thermal limit and so we weren't really getting the full performance out of the card we ended up with a fire strike score around 10,500 and then post once we actually did the refurbishment on this particular GPU, the fire strike test scored above 11,000, which is a, an improvement of 500 points. Pretty awesome stuff there. We did have the fan at 80% for that. so. When we did the run, we had a hundred percent, of course, for when it was overheating and then 80%. I just wanted to make sure it'd run good at 80%. Now, as far as mining goes, I have these cards running Raven coin and pre refurbishment. The card was getting around 8.9 mega hash a second post refurbishment. It's getting about 9.6 mega hash a second. So definitely a huge improvement there, almost a mega hash a second on Ravencoin, which is obviously going to be a welcome improvement as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, hope this video is helpful. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe down below, and I will see you next Tuesday.